Hello, everybody. I'm Jeffrey Straker, a singer, songwriter, pianist from here in Saskatchewan. And I am so pleased that you are joining me here in the beautiful and historic ballroom in Government House in Regina for this Facebook and YouTube live event. Um, I will come back here live to do a bit of a tour and a concert in a little bit. But as I mentioned when I posted this event, um, which is a wonderful partnership with Tourism Saskatchewan and Government House, we're starting this off with a video we shot in the fall which is a day trip from Regina out to the Coapel Valley area of Saskatchewan. And we hit up several stops that, that are some of my favorite places in the Coapel Valley and region that I like to go to on day trips out of the city. Do a bit of a 20-minute video doing that. Then we're going to come back here live, learn a bit about Government House, and then I'm going to play a concert on this very grand piano. So sit back. You live. Thanks again for joining us. Planet for just a quick 45 minutes outside of Regina. The time is white. It's so beautiful, and especially at this time of the year, the autumn leaves are in their full bloom. Things are good. September 15, 1874 was the sort of official date of this, the signing of Treaty 4 and every year to mark that anniversary there's a huge gathering here on the site of the signing. I'm really interested in, in this part of the history of what is now Saskatchewan because we're all treaty people and I think we can all do ourselves an awful lot of good to learn a little more about the history of these. 1870, a huge chunk of land on the prairies which what is now Saskatchewan, was sold by the Hudson's Bay Dominion of Canada. The problem was that transaction and negotiation didn't include the First Nations people, which when you think about it now, is quite preposterous. They were very smart in realizing with some of the encroachment that was already happening on their land, they saw change coming and they wanted to enter into a conversation to make sure they could have compensation, recognition, and really importantly, a security of there's an interesting fact we learned from talking to a, a fellow here earlier today that this is the only treaty uh, between First Nations people and the Canadian government that actually has a, a pictograph interpretation done by Chief Pasqua, and that sits at the Pasqua First Nation. Um, so it's, it's a First Nations visual translation of what the treaty meant. I think that's a really fascinating little piece of history. on the beautiful roads here along the lake. One of the spots I would invariably pass is the little community of La Brette. And uh, I've passed here many times and I don't actually know a lot about the history. So I thought, who better to talk to than local author historian, Alan Hustak. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, terrific. I want to learn a lot about this place in a little bit of time. In 1881, the only place between Winnipeg and Vancouver in the south of the province was La Brette and Fort Capel. Fort Capel. After the third Métis Rebellion in Manitoba in 1870, the Métis uh, came into this valley and went up to Batoche. So Batoche and Fort Capel were Métis settlements. Okay, okay. This spot we're standing in is only six kilometers from where the Treaty for signing was, right? In 1874, the Métis here wanted to be part of the Treaty for negotiation. Right. However, so they were actually excluded. It was one of the direct reasons for the 1885 rebellion. rebellion. It's amazing to think that, so places like La Brette, they were building, growing communities. They, they had for what they were going to become. You know, the, yeah, the Catholic well, Church they, decided they, they, our cathedral will be here. Yeah. And every, right. And then, of course, the railway came. And, and we, the, and we CPR, know <laughs> the CPR decided that uh, perhaps this was too beautiful. We <laughs> had a better idea of making profit in a place called Pile of Bones. Right. I drove up from the Coppell Valley to the beautiful little community of Indian Head, and I've been through this community many times, but I, one place I've never been to is the Grand Theatre. 
I keep hearing about this place though. So I wanted to stop in today and check it out and I have the great chance of running into Tara who's gonna t tell me a little bit about it. How are you yes. doing? Thank you so much for coming. One of the really unique things about the Grand Theatre is that it was built in 1904. It was the first opera house between Winnipeg and Vancouver. This is an incredible room. Uh, so first thoughts, I mean, the beautiful old tin ceiling, way it's, it's a, and you can tell the acoustics are so warm, eh? They're wonderful. We, I think this place captures... It's amazing. And, and uh, one thing I notice on the Main Street, like the Main Street in Indian Head, Grand Avenue, it's very grand. And from what I gather, people were guessing where the capital was going to be. You know, we obviously know it ended up being Regina for all sorts of various nefarious reasons. Um, but Indian Head I, was was sort of being considered, people were guessing this might be it. We like to think so, yeah. but I know our neighboring communities all consideration. So I think all of us on the yeah. rail line and... There were things going on here at the time. And in the context of that, this makes sense because this is a very grand theater for, you know, small town. I mean, there were a lot of people here. There were. It's beautiful and a huge stage area. Just a projection built on the original stage from the Opera House days or behind the screen. Okay, uh, I want to see this stage. Back. Yes, it's my favorite space. Original, original stage from the Opera House days. You can see the original catwalks from when performers would be here and to the backdrops and sets. Oh yeah, because it's like a fly tower. It is. Wow, and they could have had, you know, sets and scrims there that were pulling down, I guess. And if you look at the walls, Performers from all the way back to 1904 have signed these walls. Oh, come on. And we continue to keep that tradition today. I think one of the ones that I think is most unique is there's a youth opera company okay. that signed over here. So this Lily Pushin Opera Company. Oh, look at that. And oh my gosh. Research, they were a youth opera company out of Australia that toured. Out of Australia? Yeah. In 1914. That's amazing. I was waltzing with my darling to the Tennessee he walks when an old friend I happened to see introduced him to my loved one. And while they were waltzing, my friend stole my sweetheart from me. Oh, I remember the night in the Tennessee wall. Yeah, I know just how much I have lost. Oh, yes, I lost my little darling the night that he were playing the beautiful Tennessee wall. Oh, what a piano. 
piano. What a piano. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And in here, mm -hmm. even without a mic on it. Yeah, we feel so blessed. To be oh that. gosh, it's got great tone. Oh my God, you're lucky. So when I'm doing my road trips around this part of the province or anywhere in Saskatchewan, actually, one of the things I'm always open to is, you know, I've got my itinerary, but there's always things you stumble upon that are things you haven't heard of, but things you've maybe stumbled upon, you, you get curious about them. I just ran into this place called the Sinking Canoe Antiques Vintage Art Craft Curiosities. I'm curious, let's go in. Hello, I'm Jeffrey. Mario, good to meet you. I'm Italian. Oh, you're Italian, okay. <laughs> South of Italy, okay. Napoli, Naples. Yeah. Uh, I married a Canadian, okay. Grant, but uh, our marriage was illegal in Italy when we married 15 years ago. So there was no, no legal gay marriage then? No. Okay, okay. So he could not move to Italy. Oh. So after three years of going up and down, I came here. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, Saskatchewan is basically Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Indian Head is a nice place. Beautiful town. Yes, the houses here are something yeah. else. Yeah. So is this a, is this an RCMP hat? Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. This is Boy Scout. Oh, it's Boy Scout. Boy Scout. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I wonder. I wonder. If it, I wonder if it fits on my big fat head. Let's see. Oh, almost. I mean, my head's pretty fat. <laughs> wow. It's pretty close. <laughs> that is a beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could incorporate this into my show, maybe. Like, sitting at the piano with one of these on, that'd be pretty good. There's such, it's such curiosities, right? Like, some of this stuff is great. Oh, look at this. Central part of the Northwest District. I wonder what year this is. Beginning of the century. It's when, when Saskatchewan was not uh, all the province. No, it's like the district of Assiniboia and then Saskatchewan's there. That's amazing. May I show you something? Mm -hmm. This map. 1830 oh. is French. Oh, wow. The nice thing is that here are the names of the native, oh. which I've never seen on a map. No, here. like the different bands or yeah, yeah, tribes yeah, or yeah. 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 It's French wow. 1830. Just a small candle holder for your yes. for your dining room table, for your average dinner party. If someone asks me what is this, I always say is a holder for cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do your wedding and yeah. offer cupcakes or yeah. shots. Oh yeah, shots, jello shots. And now we're getting into Saskatchewan wedding territory here. This is great. Really close to the town of Indian Head is a place um, on this day trip drive that I'm taking. It's a place that I've, I've heard of so many times. It's the historic Bell Barn, a round barn on the prairies. And everyone knows barns aren't round, they're rectangular. I had no idea really why I should hear of it until I started doing a little bit of reading. And this barn represents a huge agricultural experiment that happened in the, in the late 1800s. So around 1882, the railway was pushing its way across Saskatchewan. And at that same time, the McDonald government decided they would set up, uh, remember, they're, they're having settlers come to the West to do a lot of farming, hopefully. They set up this massive agricultural experimental farm right here in this area. It was just over 50,000 acres big, which is huge, even by today's standards. This barn was one of the buildings on that farm. In fact, it's the last left building standing representing the experiment. They were kind of trying to figure out best farming practices for, for the prairies. It only operated for about 10 years and then it ceased to exist. So if you're doing a day trip in this part of the province, check it out. We're here in Quipel, Saskatchewan. And about 10 years ago, I came on a, on a, on a day trip, road trip, which included this community. And, and one of the locals um, took me to St. Peter's Anglican Church on that trip. And I remember it being super interesting. So I wanted to come back here today on this trip. And uh, as I've been doing in some of these stops, I'm, I've, I've been able to, lucky enough to find a local who's been able to tell me a little bit about it. And I've got Linda, who goes to this church on Sundays. Hello, Linda. Hi. It is great to see you and meet you in front of your church. I'm here to learn a little bit about it. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, t if you were to tell me anything about where would you start? Like, Well, it was built in 1882. I remember it being really strangely ornate. That's what I remember when I walked. And, and white and black checkered floor or something. That's right. Wow. It's really beautiful. We have some pretty nice things, um, like the rear redos yeah. was made in Omaramagao, Germany. We have 
bells too. Oh yeah. Yeah, like chimes. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then is there, is there are there eight ropes or? Yeah. Oh, there's eight ropes. Okay. Remember that time I fell down the ladder and that died into the panel? Here we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. So if I can do a quick, so D D D D D D D D. my tune for the day. That's amazing. We stopped in Wolseley, Saskatchewan, and what drew me back here was a recollection of once being in this old opera house. I once did a performance here in 2009 with the Regina Symphony Chamber Players, and I remembered it as being special, so, so here we are back here again on our tour. This building was built in 1906, 1907. Although it's one of the only few left in Saskatchewan of these town hall opera house buildings. At the time, there were 19 of them standing across the province. And this one has been restored and refurbished back to its original glory. What they've got now, all these years later, is this beautiful performing arts center. And it's absolutely magnificent. I was thinking about this funny pandemic time we're in, and also this beautiful place that I'm in here. And um, a song that might sort of be, be fitting here. And it's a song, um, of mine that I recently released, it's called Light of Fire. And it's a song about sort of making a positive change in yourself to hopefully not only make yourself a better person, but to make your community a better place. Realizing and keeping full grasp of the notion that each of us as individuals are, are part of something bigger as well. Um, so this song is called Light of Fire. And I think as we go through a funny time like a pandemic, um, we all know it's gonna end at some point and things are gonna get back to normal. We should sort of keep our eye on the prize and keep on being the best people we can be. So here we go. Bags are packed with some regrets I'm gonna wiggle around inside my head But I ain't gonna be Like a breeze. 
just coins of silver and gold It's the riches of our stories that fill up our souls I've been looking for the answer This day trip we took is just a 45 minute drive outside of Regina and it's, it's something I really love to do whenever I get the time is exploring some of these off the beaten track um, places in Saskatchewan. I love doing it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the places I took you today on this little trip and if you get the time someday and you're out in this neck of the woods I really encourage you to take a trip like this as well. Probably if I cut your belly you'll claw me. Is that the deal? Oh look at that. My gosh. Oh! Put on a big show. Here we go. Is that okay? Oh God, it looked to me like Satan. Forget it. Is that your cat? Hey everybody, Jeffrey here. I hope you enjoyed that day trip of the, the Capel Valley and the area around the Capel Valley. Some of my favorites in and around that part of the province. I love going to some of those places when I wanted to scan to the city for a day and sort of forget everything. There's such great history down there. Now I learned a lot on that tour. And we thought we'd come back here live to this beautiful, beautiful and historic building, which is Government House in Regina. And this was late 1800s as the official residence of the Lieutenant Governor. And now it still houses the offices of the Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan. But really, I don't know a lot about the thing. And so I'm so lucky today to be here with Bree, who's going to tell me a bit about Government House. Hello, Bree. Thank you, Jeff. Me, Jeffrey, welcome to Government House. We're excited to have you here today. Um, so yes, like you were saving, saying, Government House is a national historic site, a provincial heritage building, and a museum. And also today, the Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan and his staff work out of this building as well. Remind, remind me, because I'm, I'm, I have to remember the, the name of our current Lieutenant Governor for all our viewers. His Honor, the Honorable Russ from Rex. Okay, right. Okay, there we go. Yes, okay. So to, right now we're standing in beautiful 8.5 acres of Edwardian gardens. So back in the early 1900s, Edwardian gardens were very popular. And so they designed the uh, garden to be like rooms. So you would go to one room, experience that, you know, wander through the pathways and then experience another room with another theme. And the whole garden, um, George Watt was the gardener. Uh, back in the early 1900s, and many of, well, this whole area was completely bald, not a tree in the I can imagine. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so he actually brought back from Banff with him all these big, huge trees right. and tested to see, are these going to work on the prairies? And many of the trees you see in Regina today are, are because of George Watt. Wow. Mm -hmm. a, 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 clever, a clever Edwardian guard who it made our city look like it is. It's great. It's so beautiful, it's stunning. Um, and then, and this sort of segues us into the building, I guess. Like this is like rooms outside, and then we get yeah. to we get to check out the actual house itself, or the mansion, whatever you want to call this. You bet. But before we go inside, I do want to mention that we are able to come to Government House today. We're open, um, and people can book tours, and they can do our garden tours. And so we really encourage people to book a tour or. If they want to just wander at any time and experience the gardens on their own, bring a picnic, cup of coffee, we're, they're more than welcome. Perfect, perfect, okay. great place to play. All right, I'm curious to see this place. And, 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 and just to remind the viewers too, as we make our way through Government House for this quick tour, we're gonna make our way to the ballroom to play a concert at the end of the tour. So we're, our tour is gonna wind our way to the ballroom, but at the time, there's some really, really neat things to see with Bree. So here we go. So the first thing I wanted to bring your attention to is the portico, this official ceremonial entrance to Government House. 
And typically, um, only the Premier, the Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, and dignitaries would enter through this way. And, and singer-songwriters. And, and we're very important, too. <laughs> yes. So follow me. Come on in and welcome to Wow. So first off, there are a few steps in order to go up into government houses to subtly point out that you are going up to a building of higher importance, our Saskatchewan Royal Residence. I, I feel fancier already. Yes. Like right, yeah. And now even fancier. This is pretty good. Yes. Yeah. So, you are a very important distinguished guest. However, if you were a salesman that knocked on the door of Government House 1905, you would be asked very politely, you're coming, and would you please have a seat? So we're going to pretend that you're just somebody that knocked on the door, okay. perhaps a salesman, um, and if you would have a seat. Okay, I've got, I've got brushes, I've got, I've got knickknacks. That's right, you have something to sell. Okay. Oh. And so the staff at Government House would say, thank you so much, if you could just wait here, we will get you when we can. And how does that feel? It's really awful. <laughs> and what's happening? What are you feeling? There's a, there's like literally in the middle of my back, there's like a spike eating into my back. Okay. So if you want to do that, maybe um, our captain can kind of zoom in. There is a little, it's very beautiful chair, but there are actually faces. Oh yeah. Here and there with noses and pointing things sticking out at you. And that is on purpose to make you uncomfortable. It sure did. Yeah. It's mission accomplished. So the goal is that if they're long enough, they will become so uncomfortable that they will just leave and, and you know, we wouldn't have to deal with the salesman. So come on in further and I will invite you into the main hall. It's, it's incredible. Like when you get in here, like the, the you, you feel like you've arrived. That's right. So, so this has been restored, government house, to the time period of 1901. The first Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan lived here on a day. And so what you see is that time period of the house. And so at that time, this hall would have been used for greeting people, for events and dances. So you can actually try and envision that people would be dancing around and actually go through that door and they, it actually goes all the way through and people would come out over here and see down the And then, if you can scan up, a little up, there's a beautiful upper hall with a railing. That would have been like, the, that was the gawking. That was That's the, exactly yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the chaperone oh, yeah. would have gone up there to just watch, to make sure that the young couples were doing anything inappropriate that they shouldn't be doing. I think That's did. right. Untold. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So we'll continue on. And just the extra piano. Well, actually, that's a player piano. Oh, it, is. it is. And I can show you. Actually, you can try. Okay. Like with the I don't, pedals? You would, now, the scrolls aren't in there at the moment, but you would do the pedals and actually play. Oh, yeah. It does. There's a, right. But right now, yeah, there's, there's no scroll, but that's it amazing. would start playing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like it's like, it's like like Spotify in the <laughs> That's right, you didn't have to be so talented, no, right? Right. right? Right. But because you are a farmer, you might be interested. We'll come in here really quick. Sure. This piano is original oh. to the time period of 1905. So Henriette Forger, wife, was a very good entertainer and piano player. And so she actually purchased this piano for $600, was an atrocious amount of money wow. back then. They actually said, have it for a year without paying for it. Try it out, see if you like it. And if you liked it, you can keep it and pay the money. And she did like it and she kept it. And when she left, when, you know, Ma Forger's term was up, she left it here. Okay. Now, the uh, house eventually, you know, with so all the items in the house were sold um, and on an auction in 1945. But this piano was found and brought back to the house, and so it is original to the house. So it's stayed in my job. But I love how when, when she bought it, it was like, hey, you know, money's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, huge well, amount of money. Yeah. That's great. It's gorgeous, and it's a Heinzman. Yeah. I love Heinzman piano. Fancy piano. Okay, wow. follow me. Great room, great room. So we're 
way to the ballroom, in which we're going to be hearing you play shortly. Uh -huh. Originally, in 1901, this was actually a conservatory, a big conservatory that George Roth worked out of, grew his plants out of. I pulled it the plants and vegetables and products for to be consumed here for the staff and, and uh, entertaining at them. But in 1928, they replaced the conservatory with this beautiful ballroom and they moved the conservatory to this side of the building, which is a, a original conservatory from, from that time. It's beautiful too. Yeah, and yeah. people come and enjoy the conservatory on a winter day when it's ugly outside, it's beautiful in there. Right. So, so here we are. So we made our way to, the, to, 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 the, to, to this pretty nice this ballroom. Like we step down um, into this great space. You know, one thing I recall about this ballroom is that when I was a gaffer, I received my Duke of Edinburgh's award in, in this room from Prince Edward. And it's always been a special room in my mind due to that big day. Yeah. And a lot of special things happen in here. I think. Yeah, so to this day, this room is uh, a very special uh, room. We, we Lots of lieutenant governor events and ceremonies happen in this room and concerts. Right. So we're lucky enough to have you. Today. Well, thanks for letting me come and play the concert. Thanks for the tour. Everyone else, it's great to have, have learned more about this place in Regina, in addition to all my stops in the Coquille Valley in the video. Really appreciate it. Everyone, once again, this place opens again for tours starting June 20th. So we are booking inside tours at Government House June 20th. So go to our website. We'd love to welcome visitors back again. Bree, thank you so much. This has thank been wonderful. You. And thanks for letting me use the room for this. We're happy project. to have you. All right, here we go. Come on in. Uh, we're going to leave Bree for a second and come on into the ballroom. And uh, this place is so special. I get to now take off my mask. Solo don't need to wear masks anymore. And uh, I'm going to make my way to this piano and uh, get started. So. Okay. So here we are at the Grand Piano in the ballroom, the historic ballroom at Government House in Regina. Uh, for those of you who are sort of piano people, this is a Yamaha C7 Grand Piano. It's gorgeous. And I should mention it was a gift to Government House from the Shoemiatras, from Jackie and Morris um, at, at, a, at a point in history. Um, while you're watching, I would encourage you to all also make sure you comment. Uh, in the comments, please tell me where you're watching from. I'm always really interested to know where everyone is watching. I know we have a lot of people from across Saskatchewan, but we have people from elsewhere in Canada too. So type where you are. Um, if there's something you liked about the video or about Bree's tour, comment on that too. Hit the like button, hit the love button, because here's a little secret. The more you do that, the more Facebook will push this out and YouTube will push this out to have other people watch it. So I'm going to start playing some songs for you here, songs that I've written. And the first song I'm going to play is, uh, is called Morning Light. And then I'll come back and talk to you a little bit. Staring at the stars, but I ain't Galileo. Tiny lights are strung upon crooked wires. One falls through the night, I make a wish I hold it tight. Somewhere between what I know and what I need, we are hopes and we are dreams. A new love in the eye. Suddenly I'm a teenage man, and a kiss is the last song at a high school dance. I fall for the first time once again, write our names in fresh cement. Seeking to belong, we are letting go, we are holding on. I left my 
eyes to the clouds and I see drifts of snow it is winter out the prairie some ten years old castles and dragons to slay his youth was rare turn away digging the riches of our soul we are silver we are gold We promise and we confess All you can do is believe, I guess In Jin Hai, we are just trying our best Oh, who we are We dance and we sway And we know come what may Floating like a feather on the breeze. We are today, we are tomorrow. We have breath, we have borrowed. Funny, it takes a rear view mirror to see. Hey, hey. By the morning light, lying in my bed, voices in my head, the judge and jury. What's the point in waiting to follow through? Just do the things you want to do, like a beautiful sunrise at the dawn. We are here and then we're gone. Beautiful sunrise at the dawn. We are here and then we're gone. All right, that was called Morning Light, and it's a song from my new record I just put out about a month ago, a record called Just Before Sunrise, and uh, I hope you like that one as a way to start this little concert we're doing for you. Thanks to everyone for, for joining us. I really appreciate um, everyone for, for logging on and, and spending the evening with us. This is really fun and a really great way to get to do a live stream. I'm in partnership with Tourism Saskatchewan and uh, the fine folks here at Government House. Um, in singing that song for my new record, I got thinking in the back of my head about my old record. My previous record was released in, in 2017. And in fact, this next song I'm going to sing for you is from that record. The, that, that record I released in 2017, it's called uh, Dirt Road Confessional. And um, when I released that, early on, just after I released it, I did a show in Saskatoon, Saskatoon at a venue in Saskatoon called The Basement, which is a live music venue I love to play in. It's a fantastic place. And uh, the, there was a gal at The Basement who was sort of like the MC, and, and she was sort of, a, 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 you know, so, uh, she was a, you know, an unofficial at The Basement, if you will. And she wanted to announce the show at the start and sort of introduce me, uh, read a bit about my bio, say, but say the name of the record, and then, um, you know, say, and, and welcome to the stage, Jeffrey Straker, and then we'd start singing some songs. And so the, the name of the record, as I said, was called Dirt Road Confessional. So she got up there and she, I, I told her a few things about my career she could use in the bio, but she forgot them because uh, she didn't write them down. And, uh, and then she, all she really had to do was sort of bring it home with the title of the record and say, Jeffrey, here's Jeffrey Straker singing songs from his new record, Dirt Road Confessional, but she forgot that too. And so what she what she said though was she said ladies and so after she's like you know here's the bathrooms over there and here's get a drink over there she said ladies and gentlemen welcome to the stage Jeffrey Straker singing songs from his new record Dirty Confessions and and there we were sitting on the stage in our places 
<laughs> we're like, yeah, she just said that. So then we had to pretend like it was all fine. <laughs> and off we went playing songs from my new record, apparently called Dirty Confessions. And I was sort of, I thought it was quite hilarious, actually. So I ribbed her the whole night. And then at the merch table at the end of the night, people came up to me and they said, you know, Jeffrey, if you had a record called Dirty Confessions, I'd buy multiple copies. So there are future records. Maybe, 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 maybe. But this song is from that record. It's called Beauty in the Gray. And it's my traveling song. And it's kind of a song about the idea that I, I believe there are beautiful things anywhere if you just look for them. So I wrote this somewhere on the Trans Canada with yellow dotted lines going down the highway before me. This is called Beauty in the Gray. <laughs> Another view of the country from here behind the wheel. And coffee shakes and high hopes take the heads off I can see here. Doubts from all directions. Tonight's another stage. Oh, Martha, to the lamplight. Never to forsake, to forsake. So I fill the tank and chart the course And say my goodbye I miss my friends and my family Oh, how I'm alone But I'm not lonely All these voices in my head Whispering about the hunger And waiting to be fed some days I worked for dollars, some days for dimes. Oh, I've rolled downhill, and first stars I've prayed. The steep in lines, I follow faith through the shadows, and seeking beauty in the gray. And I got one turn in my bones, and I let go, yeah. Let my heart lead the way. I got a pocket full of promises I make to myself. And the prophets on their pastures say only time will tell. And I've been thinking about the faces I never get to know. I don't let myself get too close or do easily go. And some days I work for dollars, some days for dimes. I've rolled downhill in first stars, I pray to steep in mind. I follow faith through the shadows, I'm seeking beauty in the gray. And I got a one. In my and I let go, yeah, let my heart lead the way, yeah, and that's for regret, it tiptoes in every now and then, oh, looking for a place to lie, it stumbles out again. Oh, 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 some days I work for dollars, some days for dimes. I've rolled downhill and first stars I've prayed. The steep in lines, I follow faith through the shadows, seeking beauty in the rain. I got one. In my bones, and I let go, yeah, let my heart lead the way. Oh, I follow faith through the shadows, seeking beauty in the gray. And I got a wanton in my bones, and I let go, yeah, let my heart lead the way. Yeah. 
That is called Beauty in the Gray. Hope you like that one, little traveling song. Um, speaking of traveling, uh, we're, we're, as, as we all know, we're kind of getting sort of towards the, the, the end of the pandemic. I hope I'm not jinxing things. I'll, I'll, I'll knock on something. But, you know, where, where I'm going with this is that we're able to start actually performing as musicians real live outdoor shows this summer. And I've got a bunch of those coming up this summer. Uh, I did some last summer as well. I call it my pandemic piano backyard tour. And uh, I've got 45 backyard shows uh, happening this summer, Pre pretty much every backyard in, in the province. And there's some in other provinces too. Last summer when I did these, what happened was um, somewhere along the line, someone gave me a pie. And I, I put a picture of this pie on, on, on Facebook and it was a beautiful pie. And then what happened was everybody who hosted every successive concert uh, somehow started to figure that it was mandatory to give me a pie or something on this tour. So I received more pies and, and gift bags last summer than I could shake a stick at. And it was absolutely wonderful. I mean, who doesn't love gifts? It was great. And so uh, recently, uh, people sort of, because there's no concerts happening right now, people in Regina, some of them, they're, they're really wonderful. And they figured out where I live. And some of them have been bringing pies and things to my my doorstep and then i'll get this text message saying check check your front step and then i go outside and there's a pie and it's like i have a permanent like sort of easter bunny pie person and then last week i was brought empanadas uh from a chilean a regina of chilean descent and so so i was playing that song and i was wondering i wonder if there'll be something on the steps of government house when i'm done this show like i don't know gold bars perhaps if i if i if i played my cards right we'll find out um and I, and I glanced up once during that song and I saw this chandelier. I don't know if we have a shot of this, this thing at all. And it's absolutely stunning. And when I do these live streams from my house, I just have this like lamp with an LED bulb in, in it. It's in this horrible, horrible, this old lamp I bought at Valley Village for $4.99. And I take off the shade and sort of throw it in the corner and it does the trick. And I was glancing up thinking, well, that's not from Valley Village. <laughs> this thing is, this is a stunner. I could sit here and play under this thing all night. All right. Well, I'm going to play a song for you called Get What You Give. And this is a song that's kind of about the idea that I sort of stumbled upon. I had an epiphany one day. I was having a bad day. And sort of I was angry at the world for not, not being good to me because everything was going wrong that day. And I caught myself in the moment when I realized I was asking the world to give me things good, but I was putting nothing good out into the world. And at that moment, I had this epiphany that I was like, this really is what it is in order to try to make things good around you you got to put good energy out there if you're if you're going to be remotely hopeful that something's going to come back so this song is kind of about that it is called get what you give <laughs> I'd pray for love, try to coax it your way. Cross your fingers, the point of breaking. Cause you just need a place for your heart to go to soothe the aching. With those three words, you got tucked in the back of your mind. You know what you want, but it's hard to describe. But you go looking for it. Let it find you, we tend to kill some time. Oh, place for the quotes and the whole picture frames. Wishbones and clover and fallen star games. It's hope reaching out, trying to tap on the shoulder of fame. Ah, oh, do you fear for the break? Hold on to what is no the truth of the heart lies in less to live when it comes to love and see you get what you give. <laughs> What's meant to be, what it meant to you. Oh, and with those three words sitting there at the back of your throat, you want to move them to your lips with a matter of the most. Be proud. 
but you said it with that smile around with the warmest winter glow. On your fear for the break, hold on to what is no the truth of the hard lies and lessons you live. When it comes to love, it seems you get what you give. Well, a pawn shop is selling off old wedding rings. You feel a tug at your sagging heartstrings. And a widow places flowers on a grave that she's been tending. Oh, you see newlywed tears under confetti spray. That couple one table over with nothing left to say. And words took it all the heavy of all that way. Yeah, but you put it together and you come to know that the greater the heart, the more cracks it can hold. And a small part of you knows that at some point it might be too late. If know the truth of the heart lies in lessons you live. When it comes to love, it seems you get what you give. Oh, do you fear for the break? Hold on to what is no the truth of the heart lies in lessons you live. When it comes to love, it seems. Yeah, what you give. That is called Get What You Give. I hope you like that one. And um, remember while you're watching, for, especially if some of you didn't join, right at the start, we started out the video with, uh, with a little tour, a video tour of the Coppell Valley area of Saskatchewan that we shot last fall in all of the valley's autumn splendor. It was such a treat to get to do that. And then we did a bit of a tour of Government House with, with uh, Bree, who was so fantastic bringing this place to life. And now we're just doing a bit of a short concert here in this historic ballroom. Um, at Government House. I think I'm, I'm trying to recall Bree's facts from the, from the tour, but the, the, the house was opened uh, in 1891. The, the ballroom wasn't, this ballroom wasn't part of that. It was added on. They first did the balls out in that uh, hallway area, which is kind of neat. It would be more intimate, I'd say. This is quite grand. Like I'm, I'm, it's kind of taking my breath away as I'm playing in here. This is actually kind of difficult to do. But this was added, I think, in the 30s, I think. 28, 28. I've I've got Brie over here for 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 help. There, it, oh, in 28, it was added on. So it's it's a stunner of a room. It's real. I, and I, I don't want to I make things up. But give me a nod on this, Brie. Is this where like cabinet is sworn in often? This this is where they swear in cabinet and do all sorts of official things. Hold balls if royalty comes to Regina, they come they come here. Um, I once got to play a, a private concert for. Oh, it was a it was a room full of very fancy clad people. It was something. Well, what was it to do with? I want to say they were to do with military. Um, they, I think, they were a fa family of, of of military, and it was a it was a really fun event. Um, I had a few pops, and it was really fun. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue on with a, with a few more songs here from this gorgeous gorgeous space. Type in the comments where you're watching from. Um, your, lo your location, if you've liked anything about the tour or anything about the house or um, anything you want, just throw that into the comments, hit the like button, the love button. That's how Facebook Live works. I'm going to sing a song called One Foot on Main Street. This is a song about, for anybody out there who's from a small town, 
grew up in a small town and moved away, might live in a small town now. It's, it's the small town tune. And um, I grew up in a small town in Saskatchewan called Punishai. Uh, it's about an hour north of Regina, population 300. And um, I've got fond, fond memories of that place. And I was back there recently, uh, maybe within the last couple of years, when I actually got the idea to write this tune. I was sitting at the railway tracks waiting for the, the CN tr the train to go by because it's right on the main line of, of the, the CN tracks. And uh, I was watching the train go by and I was thrown back into this memory of being a, a kid on a bike with my friend Kyle. When the train went by, the engineer honked the horn at us. And the guy in the, then the guy in the caboose waved at us. And the song idea started coming into my head. And it turned into this song. And it sort of goes back into small, some small town memories. One of my memories I love about small towns that never made it into this song is um, I grew up an avid curler in Punishai, Saskatchewan. I loved curling. I love it to this day. And my early days in the Punishai curling rink, I remember uh, the game was very different then. It had uh, our, our three-sheet curling rink in Punishai had cup holders on stands between each sheet of ice so you could put your rye and coke in, in the cup holder because you played a way better game that way. And there were also there were also ashtrays on stands between each sheet of ice because everyone was smoking a cigarette and drinking rye and coke playing in the, during the bond spiels because that was just what was done. And I've watched some curling recently on, on, on TV, like Olympic curling. I don't know what the heck has happened to that game, but it's become very serious. And everyone's very fit. The whole, the whole thing has changed. But Curling didn't make it into the tune, but other things did. So this is called One Foot on Main Street, and I see what you make of this one. I would hear the horn blowing on the sea and the train. Wait for my bike as a kid, dream about where it could take me. I knew every house and every face inside. No one locked the door. Think about that place all the time. Coffee rolling, twirling stools at the Chinese cafe. They'd solve the world's problems before nine o'clock each day. The past is full of diamonds we once thought were cold. Mom shouting from front porches. Come for supper before it gets cold. Oh, I grew up in a small town. I'm a small town at heart. I moved to the city, but deep down I've not gotten that far. No matter where my boots take me, I grew up in a small town and I still got one foot on Main Street. We grew some gravel roads on a Friday eve. Music up windows down, setting ourselves free. For a cigarette outside the dance at the high school. Learning how to make mistakes. God damn it, we were cool and getting up was on our mind. Seemed like oldness somewhere else. Well, there were fortunes to find. Seventeen low, put it up the hatchback. Come back once a year at Christmas time to see Mom and Dad. I grew up in a small town, I'm a small town at heart. I moved to the city, but deep down I've not gone that far. No matter where my boots take me, I grew up in a small town and I had to come one foot on Main Street. <laughs> Hit it back the other day, took a drive. Grandma passed away, and we said, Ah, goodbye. Hot holes, peeling paint, it seemed better days. Some would dare see the beauty in this place. Mm. And I heard the horn blow. That seeing train, and I was a kid on a bike 
And those were simpler days. I used to know every house and every face inside. I wonder if they lock their doors. Think about that place all the time. I grew up in a small town. I'm small town at heart. I moved to the city, but deep down I've not gone that far. No matter where my boots take me, I grew up in a small town and I still got one foot on Main Street. All right, one foot on Main Street for all you small towners out there or former small towners. Hope you like that one. Um, we're at the last song of my little mini concert here from the, from the historic ballroom uh, at Government House in Regina. It was an absolute pleasure to get to, to make music in this space on this gorgeous, gorgeous piano. Um, the acoustics in here are just to die for. It's, it's tricky to try to capture the acoustics of this room through the, through the microphones. We have a mic on myself and a mic on the piano. Um, and I wish, I wish we could transport the natural you know, ambience of the room through the internet, but it doesn't, the internet doesn't quite work that way. So you'll have to use your imagination a bit. But hopefully the visual sort of um, splendor of this space is captured for you on the device that you're watching on. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, a big thank you to Tourism Saskatchewan and the folks at Government House for, for doing um, both the, the travel video we did, the day trip video, as well as letting us use this great space and, 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 and getting the tour of this, this house as well. The song I want to finish up with here is a song of mine called um, Birch Bark Canoe. And I, I, really, uh, I really wanted to sing this song in this room because it's a real Saskatchewan song. It was written after I took a trip up to, to Lac La Ronge in northern Saskatchewan. And of course, our current Lieutenant Governor Governor, his honor, uh, Russ Morasti, is from Lac La Ronge, and, and, and his wife, her honor, as well, of course. Uh, they're, they're, I, I mean, I would call that the north. I'm not sure they would. For them, it's probably the, the middle. I don't know. But uh, the, the, I, I took a trip up there. I did a concert in La Ronge, and uh, I was leaving town the next day, and I, I asked the locals, you know, what's a place in Lac La Ronge that I should visit? Because as you know, from my, my visit to the Coppell Valley, I love checking out touristy things. So everyone said, go to Robertson's Trading Post. So I was like, okay, I gotta go to this place called Robertson's Trading Post. And I went and had my socks knocked off. It was, uh, it's like walking back in time when you step in the doors. Um, there's you know buckskin coats hanging from the rafters and canoes and traps and stuffed animals and at the very back there's an actual honest to goodness trading post where uh, trappers a lot of First Nations trappers and trappers from Lac La Ronge come and trade their furs that that that, that they've that they've, they've trapped and treated and they trade them for for money at the trading post or for for goods and dry goods in 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 the trading post for groceries um, and it's actually the last operating trading post in Canada so I've been told I mean John Robertson told me all sorts of things that day I I, I started losing track of what was the truth and what wasn't but he's a great storyteller all the same and um, and I'm I'm sure most of it was true. So I do think it's the last trading post in, 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 in the country. So I, I got a paddle at this trading post, this beautiful paddle, took it home, propped it up by my old piano, and it inspired this song. Now, the song is called Birch Bark Canoe. And what you got to do to bring it to life is imagine yourself out on a canoe with the one you love, with your lover. You're out in a canoe, you're paddling along on a huge lake. So picture Lac La Ronge, perhaps, or if you're in Regina, picture Wascana Lake, wherever, some large body of water. And uh, you're paddling along, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, the, the lake's calm, but you've just had a fight. So now see, there's, there's trouble in this canoe. Um, and also, the canoe is sinking. Now, this seems like a doom and gloom song, but it's actually a song about the power uh, and, the, and, uh, and, and the ability of love to persist and get us through anything. So listen to it that way. And I think this is possibly the, one of the most Canadian songs ever written because it is set in a canoe. So without further ado, this is Birch Bark Canoe. I'm going to send this out to his honor and her honor, uh, the Lieutenant Governor, Mr. and Mrs. Morasti. <laughs> Staring at the autumn leaves 
friends with hanging on the tree is that what i was like in the end falling far away from you changing minds and changing you saying maybe we're better off as friends I flickered out and dream disappeared down clouded streams oh church with rusted regard and sailing out on his floor to oceans of mistakes I've known it's true you want to see them from afar I throw a stone the ripples flow or drifting apart but if just you and me in a broken old burst bar, no, we'd both find a way to come back again together. Yeah, that's what we do. Oh, it's true. Yellow sun, the midday June, sitting in a summer blue, and the shadows tiptoed in and took you by the hand. And they led you up a tidal wave and left you the blurry days like you'd fallen and couldn't see into their hand. I throw a stone, the ripples flow and break on the sand. If just you and me were floating out to sea in a broken old burst bar canoe, we'd both find a way to come back again together. Yeah, that's what we'd do. But if just you and me were floating out to sea in a broken old bird's bark canoe, we'd both find a way to come back again together. Yeah, that's what we'd do. Oh. That is Birch Bark Canoe, last song of the concert. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been really fun. Uh, one quick more shout out to Tourism Saskatchewan uh, for uh, working with me to make that really fun uh, day trip video into the Coppell Valley and to Government House for letting us use this gorgeous room. Uh, special thanks to Janelle Jacobson from Tourism Saskatchewan and Eric Hill for working all the, the, this incredible camera work and all the switching to make this whole thing come to life. Really appreciate you following along. Uh, tell your friends about this video if you liked it. Uh, share it on your page. Tell people to come and check it out. We'd love to get as many eyes on this as possible. Really appreciate you, you checking this out, uh, taking some of your evening to be with us. Um, so from the beautiful and historic ballroom at Government House, have yourself a great night.